Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a little get ready with me. I'm gonna be doing the yellow blush draping highlighter situation that I had on in my most recent Pam Those Eyeshadows video, but I'm not gonna be doing it the exact same because I never do the same look twice, nor did I really like pay too much attention to be honest while I was doing it. It was just kind of a thing that I didn't really intend for the look to look like that. I just kind of was playing. So we're gonna be doing something very similar to it and you'll have the essence of the technique and the application, but it's not gonna be identical. So I hope that you guys enjoy because there was a lot of requests for this yellow draping look and I'm really excited to share with you guys. So let's just hop on into it. I'm just gonna start by priming my eyes with my Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I always do my eyes first, just in case I have fallout or I need to clean anything up. This is just the easiest for me. I forgot to mention in the intro, I'm gonna be using primarily Project Pan items as well as Shop My Stash items so you guys can see those in action and see some ways that I get use out of them. And before that, concealer has an opportunity to crease. I'm just gonna go in with this like light yellow primer, not primer, eyeshadow <laughs> from my Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. I do use a fair amount of shadow to set down my primer because I want it to one set everything because my eyes are hooded I don't want anything to crease but also because I find adding a decent layer of eyeshadow helps everything blend and it helps everything kind of last longer too so staying in this palette I'm just gonna use this peachy kind of shade the very light peach and I'm gonna just pop this into my crease I'm very um liberal with this and I'm also just not very targeted at all. I just kind of go for it. I've been using this for so long now that I'm just so comfortable with this shade. I know it's going to work on me so um, it's pretty pretty effortless for me actually. So next up I'm reaching into the ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette. I'm going to be using this. This is going to be like the star of the show for the draping. So I do want to have a little bit of it in my eye look to kind of blend the two together. So I'm just going to be taking that on kind of a pretty fluffy brush and I want to pop it into mostly that outer portion of my lid. Lid? No, like the outer portion of my crease. And I'm going to kind of bring it a little bit farther out than I may initially think makes sense, but it's because I want to almost connect it once I do do the draping. Having hooded eyes, I can't look at a mirror like straight on like this. I really need to look kind of downwards. So it helps me get some symmetry, but it also helps me see all of my lid space as well and where things are laying and how to make things blend. Well, I do really think that this helps me Quite a lot. So now I'm just gonna grab a little bit of E3 which is that mustardy yellow and I think I'm gonna put that over like the entire outer half of my lid so I'm going to kind of blend it into that lighter yellow. I'm not taking it quite as far out. You know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm just going to bring it all through my crease as well. It's just not going to go onto that inner portion of my lid. So I am going to be using another palette. By no means do you guys need to use three different palettes to create this look if you have all of these shadows in singles or you have them all cohesive in one palette. I'm just using what I have to hand. I'm going to be using these more yellowy kinds of greens right here on the end. These two specifically are super yellow toned, I find. They're like olive yellows. And I'm gonna be using Mochi. I already put a little bit on my brush before I explain to you what I was gonna do. And I'm going to pop this onto the inner portion of my lid and then up into my crease, but I'm not gonna bring it as high into my crease. I'm gonna keep it a little bit more concentrated because I wanna keep the yellow as the majority of that like diffused edge so that again, it blends really well into the yellow. My natural crease kind of gets lost, but I do want to create some definition. So what I'm going to do is actually dip between these two shades so it doesn't look too harsh when I go in with Fire OG. I'm just going to kind of bounce my brush between the two and there is a lot of 
kick up in this palette, but I don't find it causes a ton of fallout on the eyes, or like on the face. It's just very powdery in the palette. And I'm just putting this pretty much in the exact same spot. What I've found recently is that I, if I work in layers, and if I slowly like build a look, it's just so, so much easier to create, but also my final look is so much more blended and so much more cohesive. And it just seems like it took an eternity to create. It just seems like a lot of hard work went into it, which it is a little bit more work than just slapping on like one shadow and blending out the edge. And I do love one shadow looks as well, but um, slowly building my eyeshadow looks lately has really stepped up my eyeshadow game as of late. I'm just gonna take the big brush that I started with, the transition shade, and I'm just going to buff everything all together. So now I'm just gonna use some Fire OG in like the outer portion of my lid and into the outer portion of my crease. I am gonna bring this a little bit farther out than I have brought any of the greens so far. One thing I love about swampy green kind of colors, like all of the grungy greens, is that even if the blend and application is not perfect, the result is still like perfect in my eyes because they're meant to be kind of grungy and undone. So I do feel like I'm already losing the yellow a bit, so I'm gonna just hop back into that matte, matte yellow and maybe this will be the time I finally hit pan on this. I don't know. It seems like it's taking forever with this eyeshadow. But in any case, I'm just going to kind of buff out this, this edge here. I'm dragging it actually beyond the tail of my brow too. Next up, I'm going to go into Leo, which is the deepest green in this palette. And this is pretty dusty, this shadow. So I'm going to make sure I really dust off my brush. And I'm just going to bring this into the outer portion of my lid. I'm really just working it into the crease. I'm working it into all of the other shadows. The key to this look and um, a lot of looks really is just like constantly sandwiching shades and that's really what I'm gonna do with the cheeks as well. It's just like sandwich layer, sandwich layer kind of, kind of thing. I haven't added anything new to my brush. I don't even know if there's anything left, but I'm just gonna bring this a little bit farther out just so that it doesn't look structured even though I wouldn't say it does anyways, but I just want to kind of drag it out towards my temples. I didn't think that I was going to use the green from the Gemini palette, but I just want to grab my e.l.f. glitter glue, just got a little bit on my fingers, and I'm just going to pop this onto the inner, like, two-thirds of both of my eyelids, and I'm going to try that. But just seeing that palette... <laughs> Every time I look at it, that green really just like screams at me, so I kind of feel like I need to use it. So yeah, I'm just gonna go into this shimmer called Goals. It does have quite a bit of fallout, so that's why I needed the glitter glue. And I'm using the finger that I have the glitter glue on as well to kind of help adhere it. But I'm gonna try to tap it a little bit, because I know, I know this has a lot of fallout. I'm just being so, so light-handed. And I'm just gonna pop it onto kind of like that middle section of my lid. But I wanna save that inner part of my lid for a bright gold. The gold in the ABH Norvina palette is beautiful, so I'm just going to kind of mesh these two colors together. So next up, I'm going into that gold, like I said, and I'm just gonna apply that on my middle finger. This is the shade C2, which it's not really the most interesting shade in the actual palette, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful on the eyes, and I've been using it a lot while using the yellow from this palette, so it really introduced me to this shade. And I'm just kind of working it onto my lid because I really want to get optimal shine, but I also want to make sure it really blends into that green. And then I'm just taking my ring finger and kind of mashing the two together. I'm just going back into Leo where the shimmer meets the green. I just want to make sure it looks blended. So I'm just kind of tapping my brush onto that 
portion and kind of dragging again towards the tail of my brow but towards my temple and I kind of I kind of fucked up doing that so I'm going to have to fix that in just a moment so in order to fix that I'm just going to use the brush that had the yellow on it and hopefully I can just kind of blend this out maybe I'll use my finger there we go that looks better there definitely was some pretty significant fallout under my eyes of those shimmer shades, especially the green. But in any case, I just went and cleaned that up. I just used a Q-tip with some of my eye cream. All my skincare stuff is downstairs, so I just thought it was easiest to do it off camera. But I am going to do my complexion now. And I did shop my stash for just this little sample of the Tatcha, the silk canvas. So I'm going to give it a try. I... Don't know how many uses I'll get out of this, but we'll see how much is in here. I have tried this. I did have like a little sample pot from Sephora and I got a couple uses out of it. Quite honestly, I don't really remember how I felt about it, but I'm gonna go in with this much, not very much. I don't think you need a lot for this. And I'm just applying it to both fingers. I'm gonna put a little bit around my nose quite a bit on my lines and then a little bit around my smile lines and then I'm just gonna kind of work it into the pores and into the lines. Mm, it smells very nice. I'm just gonna kind of push it into the pores to kind of fill them out and make them look a little bit smoother. And the same thing with my lines, but my lines are getting pretty serious. <laughs> I always knew I was gonna get wrinkles early because I've always had very like expressive brows and I've always had kind of a little bit of like wrinkly brows if I like really express, but now the lines are, they're here to stay. So next up, I'm going to be kind of mixing these two products. I got these both in my Shop My Stash. This one was randomized and this one I chose because this shade is far too fair for me right now. But the First Aid Beauty Concealer, I intentionally got in a dark shade to use as like a mixer because a mixer foundation I feel like I'll never go through, but a concealer is like half the price of a foundation, but it also will still work just as well and you really don't need oftentimes much of it, so I just felt like it made the most sense economically. So I have that on there. The shade is not too too far off, so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of put like a little, little dab of concealer. Oh what? That color does not look bad. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to kind of work this in a couple sections on my face. I personally really like with tinted moisturizer to kind of create a thin layer across my whole face before I actually blend it in or before I use a sponge to blend it in because this way I feel like I get the coverage as even as possible. Now, not everyone needs coverage everywhere but for me, I do like to have like a thin layer of coverage across my entire face. So that's what I do with that. And then I kind of work it in with the sponge and, and kind of blend it out onto my hairline and into my jawline using my sponge. So this will take away a little bit of that coverage, but this makes sure that it's nice and even. Just kind of like pushing it into the skin. I don't have any left on the back of my hand, but I do want a little bit more coverage here. So I think I'm actually gonna mix the Too Faced Born this way with the First Aid Beauty Concealer. Do I feel like I need anywhere else really? Maybe there. Maybe just a touch around my nose where I do get kind of red. And then I'm just going to Buff that out. I'm gonna use my Urban Decay Naked Skin under my eyes. Anything that I kind of pick up on my sponge, I always like to bring down the bridge of my nose and up into the center of my forehead to make sure that the center of my face looks cohesive. It looks like the same complexion. <laughs> So otherwise my under eyes can look very bright and then the rest of my face doesn't look as brightened and it, it's too stark, it's out of place. So I really like to just bring that to the remaining portions of my, the center of my face. 
I don't want to admit this because the silk canvas is so expensive, but I think that primer really helped make my skin look nice and smooth and airbrushed because my forehead looks really, really good, even though I was like really flexing it, explaining to you guys my forehead wrinkles. And even around my nose area right here, like the pores, this is where I have the biggest pores right there. They look really minimized as well. It looks really good. Next up, I'm gonna use my Flower Beauty Blush Balm. I did shop my stash for this and I love this product so, so much. Mine's in the shade Nectar, which is like a muted coral peach kind of shade. And I just applied a tiny little bit to the back of my hand. I'm gonna use my ring finger to just pop it onto my cheeks. Yeah, it's quite orangey and I love the warmth of it. I think it's so, so pretty, but it's so sheer that it literally just adds a hint of warmth to your skin without looking artificial in any capacity. It's in part because of the finish, but also because of the color. It's just, it's just beautiful. And then I'm just going to use the back of my sponge to really blend this out. Wow, my face looks so light compared to my neck and shoulders. I'm gonna set my under eyes with the Revolution Lace Powder. I have it in the Too Faced Peach Perfect packaging, but I have it just a little bit in the lid, and I'm just gonna pop the like pointed tip of my sponge into it and kind of work the product into the side of the sponge. And then I'm just gonna lay this on my under eye. And I know baking is not really a thing anymore. People don't do it, but I need to because my under eyes do have some fine lines and like I said I can be quite expressive so I really need to set this region I notice a huge difference if I don't set my under eye and I feel like it just pushes the light back it like really bounces back the light so this area doesn't look as dark or as deep as it does otherwise this brush doesn't have any additional product on it I use this every single day to kind of just like kick off all of the powder under my eyes so that, that's the only reason why there's a little bit of product that you can see, but I haven't added anything new to it. I'm just going to use this to kind of buff this area. I need a bit of bronze for sure, so I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow. This is a very fair bronzer, but it works really well for the yellow. It's going to mesh really well into the yellow, and it is what I used last time when I did this look. I found that it just like blended so effortlessly, and I'm just using a stippling brush to make sure that it does apply very diffused and not too heavy handedly. And I'm just going to keep it basically kind of like a contour, but just the littlest bit higher than that, because I'm going to use this almost as a guide for where my yellow can go. Did that sentence make sense? Not sure. And then I'm going to bring a little bit up onto my hairline. So I'm just going to use whatever's left on my brush to kind of just bring a little bit of bronze across my nose. I'm doing a little bit, a very, very faint wave technique here. I see Julia Adams do this all the time for that um, very natural looking bronze. And now for what you guys actually asked for out of this video, I'm going to go into the shade D1 from the ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette. I'm using this tapered highlighter brush from Luxie, I believe. Yeah, you can see it does have that tapered edge, but it definitely is too big for my eyeshadow pan. So I'm just going to pinch the brush a little bit. I hope you can see. And I'm just going to try to keep it as concentrated in that pan as possible. I really don't want to get any of the blue beside it on my brush. And I'm trying to really concentrate it mostly on the tip of the brush so that when I apply it, I can use the edges and like some of the other bristles to kind of blend everything out. So I am definitely gonna tap this off. So this is a little bit nerve wracking for sure because I do have bright yellow on my brush. Let's just hope it's not too concentrated. So I'm starting it right at the edge of my eye, um, like where my eyeshadow kind of ends. And I'm just gonna try to keep it in that spot, but really buff it. You can see already it's starting to blend into the eyeshadow. I'm not really moving my brush too, too much. I'm kind of letting the brush do the work itself by just kind of doing a slight swirl. 
And then I'm going to bring it up to my temple as well. And then whatever's left, I'm going to kind of drag a little bit down towards where I have that blush. I do want to just keep building up this side before I start on the other side. So I did just add a little bit more onto my brush. And again, I'm just going to start in that same spot. That's where I want the most concentration of pigment. It's kind of right here. How do you describe this spot? The top, very top of my cheekbone and right at the starting of like the hollows of my under eyes almost. And then I'll just kind of diffuse it from there. And I don't know if you can tell, but I feel like it actually adds a lot of shape to my face. And I quite like this. I really like this. I wish this was something that I could do more Frequently, I mean, it's makeup, I could do it whenever I want, but yeah, I actually do think that's kind of flattering. So we're gonna do the other side as well. So same thing, I'm just really kind of swirling and buffing and keeping it really close and concentrated to make sure that that is really blended, but also really pigmented in that area. And then I'll sweep it and pull it to the temple, to the hairline, and then drag it down. I like it. I think it looks cool. And to further blend everything together, I'm going to be using a luminous bronzer. You can use whatever you have that's a luminous bronze. And I'm going to be using the hourglass one just because I love this and it's pretty much done. There is like yeah, this may be the last time I use it. There's like nothing left in here. But in any case, I'm just using the exact same stippling brush, really gonna work it into the brush. And then I just wanna kind of blend exactly where the yellow ends and where my other bronzer begins. I don't wanna go too high up towards my eye look because I do want to retain that yellow, but I do want this to look really seamless and I do think that having this warmth is really good because that Charlotte Tilbury bronzer as much as it it does work well with it it is quite cool so I need something to almost merge the two together just for some fun I don't know if this is going to work but I'm going to use this number seven eyeshadow this is the shade Moroccan Sands and I'm just going to use the exact same brush again and I'm just going to pop this basically where my blush kind of meets the bronzer, I suppose. I don't know how to describe this, but I'm just going to sweep it up and into both the yellow and into the bronzer. Actually, I'm just gonna bring it all the way across where the blush is. Changed my mind instantly. It just is this gorgeous warm sheen. Oh, I love it. Now I'm gonna bring that across my nose. I have still not yet hit pan on this yellow, so I think I'm just gonna amp it up a bit and see if, see if the pan will appear. Will she, won't she? I don't know. I'm gonna use this, it's more like a shader brush, but I'm gonna use this for my lower lash line and I'm going into that yellow again. And I'm just gonna run this along basically the outer two thirds of my lash line. And then whatever's left on the brush, I'm just gonna use on my lid to kind of re-intensify the yellow if any got lost in all that blending. And then on the exact same brush, I'm gonna go into E3, which is that mustardy shade. And just pop that on there, all across my lower lash line actually. So I'm just gonna be hopping into the Gemini palette and using a little bit of Fire OG on my lower lash line on the outer portion. And whenever I do my lower lash line, I always use like that motion to still just blend out the lid as well. Whatever's left on my brush, I'm just kind of dragging in over that gold and over that green to just re-intensify. 
I think what made the look a little bit more wearable last time I did this was using a little bit of my Fenty highlighter because this is a very like white gold shade. It merges really well with the yellow, but it also helps to kind of reflect the light so it's not just like a huge stark splotch of yellow. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of this on the very top of my cheekbone and up just a little bit on my temple. This is not usually where I would apply my highlighter these days, but with this look, I think it just helps to really amplify, but also amplify but subdue the yellow. Does that make sense? I don't know. You know what? I'm just gonna bring a little bit underneath my brow bone too. I'm also gonna take a little bit of this Fenty highlighter on my nose and between my eyes kind of. And then on my ring finger, I'm just gonna apply this on my inner corner as well. I'm just kind of buffing that a little bit with the brush that I dusted off my bake with. Just to make sure it doesn't look super stark. I think it looks good. I definitely need some brows on, but first I'm going to kind of set everything in place and help to take down a little bit of the powdery look using my Catrice Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. I haven't used this in a few months. And I feel like this will be really good for this look. So I'm just gonna shake it up because it does have a little bit of like an iridescent shimmer in it and then just go for it. And I'm just using my sponge to kind of, again, blend everything and mash everything together. Ah, oh, I feel so much more comfortable and so much more myself with my hair down, even though it's kind of greasy and kind of out of sorts. It is what it is, but I'm going to be using my e.l.f. Wow Brow through my brows. I think this is all I'm going to use. I didn't even bring like an angled brush up here to put a bit of powder in. Maybe. I think this is just as good as the milk one that I just finished. Just as good. I feel like I can get a really nice, fluffy, defined looking brow. It does offer a little bit of pigmentation and definition. It's just so good. The mascara that I'm currently using is this CoverGirl The Super Sizer Fibers. I only opened this about a month ago or maybe just over a month ago and it already is getting kind of dry. It was a very dry formula from the beginning but I'm finding I really have to do a few coats with this. So I just did like three coats of mascara on my lid and I think I do want to do another one but I'm going to just let this dry while I do my lips. I'm going to do a nude lip this time. Last time I did a nice brown lip and I think that was a lot of fun but I do want to mix it up a bit, so I'm going to be using my Bite Beauty Honeycomb Lipstick. This is not available anymore because Bite has not yet reformulated the Amuse Bouche line from what I've seen, but I am going to just use this because I absolutely love it and it's like the perfect like 90s kind of lip in my opinion, like very grungy kind of brownie pink. It's like actually not even really pink, it's like a full on beige. I feel like this lip gloss that's in my Shop My Stash is going to be perfect with honeycomb as well. So I'm just going to pop this kind of in the center of my lips just to make them look a little bit more full. And for that little bit of shine. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. I think I might have just found my new favorite lip combo. Look how good this color is. Oh my gosh. And I don't think I remembered to tell you guys what this lip gloss is even. This is the Catrice Generation Plump and Shine Lip Gloss in the gloss. Lip gloss in the shade Shimmery Goldstone. So good. I love these together. This look is complete, but I think I'm just gonna pop a little bit of that Fenty highlighter on this very tippity top of my collarbone. And right here on the front of my shoulder, I'm not doing anything tonight. I'm literally gonna go um, make some dinner and then pack for camping this weekend. But we're gonna glow, we're gonna glow doing it. But 
I know, it's ridiculous, but I love this look. I am so happy with how this turned out. And now that I have that little bit of glow, this look is done. I am so in love with the way that this turned out. To be honest, guys, I was a little bit weary. I didn't really want to do it again because I don't like doing looks back to back. That's part of the reason why I don't do tutorials on my channel. But I freaking love this and I hope that you guys learned something. I hope that you took something away from this video and maybe you can try this out on your own or you can use these techniques to like use a different color scheme. This would look really cool with like a cool toned fuchsia kind of pink. This would look really cool with orange. This would look really good with a light pink as well. You could do this with like any traditional blush color I think or of course the yellow or like a mustard color would be absolutely beautiful too. I hope that you guys try this out on your own or do something comparable or inspired by this. That would mean the absolute world to me but thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!